Today might be the most worrying time in the history of the Subnautica franchise. Subnautica 2 is shaping up to be a complete mystery box from the fans' perspective. After the live service scare a few months ago, I'm concerned for the future of the Funny Fish game. The trademark aspect of Subnautica and Below Zero was their early access, which stretched from the very start of development all the way to the full release, but Subnautica 2 seems to lack that in as meaningful of a capacity. Take this for instance. Subnautica entered early access in 2014, and the alpha builds were hardly worthy of the title video game. It got more and more fleshed out over time until it finally released in 2018. Barely a year later, Below Zero entered early access, and it too was in a very early state, most of its assets just being copied from the first game. It got developed more and more until it released in 2021 to more mixed reviews. And then... Silence. In late 2022, we got the 2.0 update, that I don't even play the legacy version, it's just a pure experience in my opinion. But since then, there have been very sparse bits of news on Subnautica 2. If the devs have been working on it as much as they should, it should be pretty far along by now, which begs the question, where is early access? That system is what saved Subnautica. Without it, it never would have taken off to the extent that it did. The community feedback that shaped the game every step of the way is just not available now. With Below Zero, Unknown Worlds took slightly less feedback, and the fans liked it less. With Subnautica 2, they aren't even giving us the opportunity to hand them that feedback. And before you say they might release it soon and make me look like a clown, they specifically stated in an update, quote, Early access is not intended for release in 2024, but we plan to share a lot more information later this year. Whatever information they do share, I can only hope that it leads to a good path for the future of the series. Now, with that tirade out of the way, I want to move on to my main concern. What Subnautica 2 could actually be. It's extremely well documented here on YouTube that Subnautica and Below Zero have very, very different feels to them. While some people prefer Below Zero's more narrative-focused linear path, and I and what I believe is the majority prefer the solitude and terror of the first game, the feeling the first game in particular gives me has never been matched by any video game ever. And I can count on two hands the amount of times that I've dreamt about just that game and nothing else. From the creature designs, to the map geometry, to the soundtrack, Subnautica 1 is the first game I think of when someone mentions immersion as a concept. In contrast, Below Zero's fish are more arthropod-esque, the leviathans, with the notable exception of the shadow leviathan, not packing the same horrifying punch of the strangely human face of the reaper, or the shock and awe of seeing the sea dragon guarding its fortress. Below Zero's soundtrack, while I love Ben Prunty and am biased towards him by the fact that he composed for Celeste, my favorite game of all time, and the fact that I've been playing his music this entire time, Simon Chalinski knocked it out of the park with the original. It's less about bopping, even though it still does, and more about that magic word from earlier, immersion. The future of this franchise depends on whether Unknown Worlds decide to listen to the community or double down on what they liked about Below Zero. I'm going to go ahead and assume, for the purposes of my sanity, that you know the common points of why people don't like Below Zero. You're a smart little goblin, I know you'll live. Now, I think the best indicator of the direction of the series going forward is something you don't usually think about unless it actively impedes you. The shape of the map itself. Look at this scene of the grassy plateaus in Subnautica 1. See how it's vast, open, plenty of space for, say, a cyclops, or a base. Now, look at this shot of Below Zero's closest analog for it, the thermal spires. Now, this is a more extreme example, but here's a closer comparison. Look at the jelly shroom caves from the original. Now here is the deep twisty bridges from Below Zero. Same point in progression, same overall design, as caves just below the seafloor. The problem is that one gives you no space to breathe. You could build a base down here, but the game gives you no reason to want to. The map itself seems to tell you to look at how pretty it is and then move on. 
This runs counter to all of the new bells and whistles that you have for base building, including the large room that takes up even more space in a smaller map. Let me demonstrate the tonal shift between the games further. Look at the crab squid. See how it looks alien, but in a familiar way. Pleasing to the eyes, bioluminescent enough to see from far away in, say, the blood kelp, and quiet enough to sneak up on you before letting off its EMP blast. Now take a look at the Cryptosuchus from Below Zero. Its design is still good, but more drab. It looks better at night, but during the day it could be described as somehow even more annoying version of the Bone Shark. In addition to that, I had to physically turn down my audio during my first playthrough of Below Zero because they are so dang loud. Seriously, I could swear they roar louder than a reaper. That's the problem that a lot of creatures, and especially leviathans in the second game, share. Unknown Worlds didn't quite understand the terror-horror ratio of the Reapers, Ghosts, and Sea Dragons of the first game, so they placed the new Chelicerates and Squid Sharks and so forth over key plot points, made them scream really loudly, and went off to wash their hands in the bioreactor. Let's just hope they saw one of the millions of videos that lectured everyone on the terror-horror dichotomy in Subnautica to learn from their mistakes. Speaking of the places the Leviathans roam, though, let's see another environmental comparison, but this time to illustrate a new point. Take a peek at the lava lakes of the original. Your first reaction upon reaching this place is probably, oh crap, I'm in trouble. Now gaze upon the fabricator caves of Below Zero. Although both are just as deadly, maybe one lacking lava damage, your first reaction upon seeing this scene is most likely along the lines of, wow, that's pretty. And therein lies the flaw in Below Zero's design. Subnautica feels like it could really exist. In our oceans, for every coral reef, there's a thousand miles of blank nothing. Subnautica captures this with biomes like the Sparse Reef, which has little to distract you from the emptiness below. A similar place is under the underwater islands before it transitions into the blood kelp. But in Below Zero, the biomes feel like, above all, they were designed to look pretty. And don't get me wrong, every inch of Below Zero looks stunning! However, I think they did it a little too well. Where Subnautica looks like a plausible world that most likely exists in some capacity out there in the universe, Below Zero looks like an aquarium, meant more for viewing than living. This isn't inherently wrong, but Below Zero's art direction I think would better suit either a VR title or something like the big screen tube at the start of the Manta if you've ever been to SeaWorld San Diego. So to end this rant, I think that the art team should step back a bit for the next game. Subnautica 2 could be heading in any direction from here, and that scares me. However, hope lies in the very name the devs have given, Subnautica 2. Not Subnautica 3, 2. That name implies that they're building off of the first game's principles, not Below Zero's. I do think Below Zero did a lot of things wrong, but it also did a ton right. I love the characters it introduced, and I, I love hearing their voice logs. I hope that in Subnautica 2, there's more character work than just the Degassi people from the first game and a few one-offs. Marguerite was passable in Below Zero because she didn't detract from the isolation, she reinforced it. She wanted nothing to do with Robin at first, and I think that's good. It keeps the player alone, if not physically, then emotionally. I don't want Unknown Worlds to completely disregard the second game to make a new second game. I want them to see what worked and work it. I want them to only fix what broke. And the thing is, it seems like that's where they're heading. Look at this piece of concept art for the new game. It still has the sheen of Below Zero's art direction. It's still beautiful. But it seems dialed back. It seems calmer. It's not bursting with life. Sure, the vine stuff coming from the ceiling makes it look like a car wash, but you don't see much fauna. Maybe that's because this is only concept art, but I hope it's this serene in the final game. I'll be optimistic and hope for an early access release in the start of 2025, and they're going back to the series' roots for more inspiration, but Maybe I'm just huffing on that copium since I don't want to see one of my favorite game series of all time flanderized into oblivion. Thanks for watching. I don't know why you did, but since you did, you must have liked it. So, uh, why don't you like it? And maybe perhaps subscribe? Just a thought. 
And I have a Discord. It's in the description. Okay, I'm now shelling. Stay tuned. <laughs>